Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. I am your host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I just want to say, starting this episode off, um, sorry I ran around like a complete idiot looking for that merchant in the last episode, because I confirmed, and I'm sure by the time this video goes up there will probably be 10,000 comments on the other one of people uh, telling me this and pointing it out, but I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge it now before that video goes up since I do these in clusters, so technically I'll be addressing this before that video even goes live, but then this will go live very well two days after that one. It's like, okay, I'm not going to explain Ant-Man's quantum realm to you like Tony Stark, but what I'm going to tell you guys is sorry. I'm very sorry that I ran around like an idiot looking for the merchant, and it's unfortunate because I totally thought he was there. I memorized where most of them are based on where their little icons pop up on the map, not the scenery where I talk to them. Like, I imagine where these merchants are by doing this and looking at the map and looking for the little brown icon. And he is very much right here. Like, that's exactly where he is. But I checked the wiki, and it turns out that you actually have to enter the Academy of Rey Lucaria first before you can talk to him. He's inside that place, not surrounding it. Um, so, yeah. I was technically in the right place the whole time. He was just like about 150 feet above us on the bridge. It's unfortunate because I want those damn sleep bolts so we can experiment. But we'll get to that stuff later. We're going to get that cookbook eventually. Let's keep the action going though, shall we? Um, I know that last episode, I, the only thing I can really do with that last episode is I can just hope and pray that you guys just like spending time with me. <laughs> and... uh I just have to be hopeful that you guys enjoy hanging out with me more than anything else because uh, where's the elevator we need to take? I guess it'll be back here because uh, that episode was not super eventful. This one, though, will be. I'm going to make it up to you guys. So we're going to fight some shit. So these cracked crystals. Here's why we want to pick these up. Because we can do this. We can create crystal throwing darts with them. And these are awesome. They cost basically almost no FP. And uh, long ago it is said that a golem crafter employed a similar crystal tool. Pretty cool. Um, throws at enemies to deal magic damage. And the cool thing about the magic damage is uh, these hit incredibly fast. And you can throw them in rapid succession. You can throw like three, three in a row really fast. So... You guys know what I'm doing here. We're just going to do our due diligence, and uh, we are Souls players after all, right? So we need to check up here on these paths to make sure that there's no goodies, which there are more cracked crystals. Totally worth going back up and looking. Because the more of these we have, the better. Since I'm not an intelligence build, and I don't have a use for anything on this character really that scales with intelligence, like these darts do, because they're magic damage, but I'll tell you why they're smart to have, is because out of all the things that you can throw in rapid succession, these are pretty good. They, uh, they hit pretty hard. Alright, you. And then who else do we have in here? Alright, we got a chest up there, more guys, excavators. So this guy has a staff. He's going to use the, uh, the drilling magic spell. And we're going to pick that up. I don't know that we're necessarily going to get it in here. I don't think, as a matter of fact, I don't think we do get it in here. But, uh, put him down. Yeah. But it's a pretty powerful magic spell. That's a fancy chest, man. Look at it. It's all rounded and golden. He gave us a somber smithing stone tier too. No complaints from me. None. That's a great item to have. Totally looks like it should be a fake wall. I don't care what anybody says. So yeah, do yourself a favor. Pick these up. Because being able to make these on the fly, it's going to be one of our most abundant throwing weapons. As we progress. Alright, so there he is demonstrating the magic spell that they use. It's uh, like a magic excavating 
type skill. It's pretty cool. Get all that. I can already see some upgrade materials over there in the distance. So we're going to be grabbing some wonderful somber and regular smithing stones in this place. It's going to be great. All right. Let me get this guy. Oh, yeah. They're done. They're done. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't think you can jump up and grab the ones that look like you can loot them. Um, I try every time, though, just because. Oh, yeah, just one R2 attack, or heavy attack, I should say. Not everybody is on PlayStation 5. This does not activate. We need to go down there and activate it first. Then we'll be able to use it. Just one heavy attack is enough to kill these guys. That's highly convenient for us. I'm about it. Alright. Let's assess the situation before we attack, shall we? So, two guys sitting down here. And then we know... That guy over there is uh, going to throw things. The ones with the cape like to throw the magic objects at you. Which will home in. Why is my flail? My goodness. Alright. That's why you don't let your flail drink espresso. So we have another mining guy down. Far end of the tunnel there. So doesn't look like there's any extreme danger happening here. So let's just, let's just do our thing. Bring this guy down. Look at that. They didn't even get up. Alright, let's see if we can play around with some darkness or black flame, I should say. Which, same thing, right? Oh, yeah, that does a lot of damage. <laughs> Big fan of black flame. It is so good, man. Alright, there he goes. He gonna be throwing shit at us now, but that's okay. We can go over here and dodge it. And he should lose aggro. If he can't see us, that is. Alright, and once it gets close enough, we're gonna do some Batman shit. No 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 Felt pretty good. And you. I know, I know you guys are just trying to get your eight hours in. I, I get it. But I gotta put you down, I'm sorry. And I gotta steal your shit in the process. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> So sneaky sneaky, confessor style. Oh, that super fast attack is super, super entertaining to use. But we need a heavy attack. That's what kills these guys in one hit. Oh, we got the digger's staff. Alright. Now I can actually show it off. Without being all talk. Cool. Check it out. So the digger's staff. D in strength, C in intelligence. Yeah. Boosts the power of stone digger sorceries. And the skill, it's a glintstone staff and uh, boosts stone digger sorceries. Yeah. Alright, so if you were to use the, uh, the attack that they're using to excavate the material out of the wall, it would do more damage with this equipped. Cool stuff. We don't want to forget this. That's a tier 3. Yeah, we definitely don't want to forget that guy. Hmm. 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 Alright. I'm going to go up where that guy was. I think there's an item in the corner here. Yes. Two items. Another tier 3. Another tier 3. Goodness. That should be everything in this room. Now it's time to go down. 
But we're going to do our thing. Of course we are. Okay, so nothing on this level. It's okay. How about here? Yes, here we go. Aha, somber, tier two. Gimme, gimme. It's down there. Oh yeah, that's everything that's waiting for us. And then the boss will be at the very bottom. That is the boss room. We can see it down here. Um, can't really see the boss you can just barely but it is a, it is a crystal golem which the crystal golem is one of the best spirit ashes that you can get in this game but when you're fighting them <laughs> it's a different story <laughs> unfortunately they are a huge pain in the ass when you fight them they can be quite difficult i don't recommend fighting them without strike damage but i got you covered because if you've been following the walkthrough and playing alongside me, you will have a plus nine flail, which just happens to be strike damage. So, your boy LP is on it. All right, sneaky, sneaky, confessor style. So for this part, here's what you're gonna do. You can go kill this guy first if you want. I mean, he's he's really just out of the way. Um, he is more of a distraction than anything else, because if you don't go prone or sneaky like we are right now, when you attack him, excuse me, those two guys up there that do the throwing sorceries will see you. They will aggro you. So, if you're going to kill this guy up here first, be smart about it. Just crouch. Get rid of him. And immediately go back to crouch, so the guy over there doesn't see you. I'm going to grab his stuff. There. I just did your whole job for you. <laughs> Excavate it in one button. Boom. I deserve a raise. I should be running this company. So this is the part that's kind of stupid and tricky. So this guy, his path that he wanders will take him to the side there, but it's not going to give you hardly any time to get across the bridge and try to get rid of him without some kind of retaliation. So let's see. Now that guy has officially turned around. He will not do anything to you while you're on this bridge as long as you are crouched like this. So. And of course you can cheese them. Like you can throw cross, you can do crossbows, you can, you can do whatever you want to them um ballista hell <laughs> if you're feeling mean send them flying uh sleep pots you should be able to put them to sleep but uh really the smart way to do this if you want to be real stealthy confessor style is i'll show you exactly how to do it where you won't have a bunch of retaliation to worry about because fighting two of these guys at the same time is not the end of the world but when they're both throwing stuff at you simultaneously it can get kind of hairy because you saw a little glimpse of what that guy can do with his throwing object in uh the previous room back there above it homes in on you it's kind of a pain in the ass so let's do this we'll sneak our way across this bridge pretty much prince of persia ninja gaiden style all right, take this guy down in one backstab. Take this guy down in one running heavy attack. So, not bad. That could have gone way worse. No, oh, just one hit. All right. And don't forget to loot your somber smithing stones. This here is the shortcut. We don't have to take it. And I don't think there's any items on the way up there. there maybe there is. We're going to have to check. But I'm going to steal their shit first. Yeah. Give me all that. And this will take us further downward. It'll progress us towards the boss. What I would like to do is ride this thing up. Because I want to get right here on this very next level. I want to see what's up there. There's got to be something. So let's see what it is. Um, well, didn't look like much. Can I drop down to it from right here? It looks like not. Yee. I don't see any items, though. There's probably nothing there. That's probably a legit distraction. It would have worked. 
Yeah, let's get another peek, shall we? Yeah, there's nothing up there. Okay, whatever. That was mean from soft. Trying to take advantage of a man who enjoys covering every single corner of the dungeons that he explores. Hi. I don't think so. Yeah, so guard counter against those guys works wonders. And they are also consequ uh, consequently weak to the strike damage. It's fantastic. However, there's more than one of them in here. There's one like right around the corner here, I think. Or maybe it was him. Okay. So we're fine. You gotta watch the ceilings with these guys because oftentimes they like to do that. Okay, we are getting all the smithing stones. I love it. All right, yep. Boom. Just like I said. Get down. Come on over. And I recommend shooting one down at a time because, uh... Oh, shit. No. I keep thinking I'm going to switch back to my damn shield. No. All right. <laughs> this guy I have no patience with. We're just going to bring him down. But, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. They don't both aggro. So pull one at a time because it just works better, you know. So these guys... Pull these guys one at a time while they're playing with their little magic. Guess that's that's very nice. Okay, these guys being able to shoot the arrows in rapid succession is quite problematic for us. It's like bad because their shots, like their uh Oh, what would be the gun term? Their rounds per second uh, can exceed our crossbow. It's bad. <laughs> All right, and then I think there's a guy. No? Okay, maybe I'm just being overly cautious. I could have swore there was a guy around the corner in one of these. Maybe it's one of the other ones a little further down. All right. Oh, shit. I knew it. He was there. He dropped down. How rude. You know how disrespectful that was, don't you? What do you drop? Cuckoo Glintstone. Okay. Oh, we got their armor and then some arrows. And the crystal knife. So it's an intelligence-based dagger. It has a D in intelligence, D in strength, D in dexterity, and it has split damage between physical and magic. However, unlike the Misericord, it has a regular crit on it. So it looks really cool, and uh, it's got quick step, quick step on it, and it's got really, really low stat requirements. It's a great offhand weapon if you need something with quick step, and you don't feel like wasting the Ash of War on your main hand for quick step. It's perfect for intelligence builds that want something with quick step. It can be quite useful, because quick step is really good for getting away. That's, that's where quick step shines, is escape. All right, so let's finish off this last wave. This is a uh, this is kind of a longer one. Most of the mines are not this long, but this one, this one's pretty long. Um, all right, let's do this. So these guys excavating. If we had a really really good area of effect spell, we could just clear them like that. I mean, the, the frenzy, it would probably do it, but then I get this guy's attention, and I don't want to do that. So let me. Let me do this. Let's see if we can make some uh, craftable items, shall we? So fire pots. Fire pots are really good against these guys. Now I want to make some more sleep pots. Just want to experiment. Let's see if sleep pots actually work against this guy. They do. That's amazing. All right. Let's get rid of this guy. 
And let's see if we can use the Frenzy to kill these guys in one hit. I doubt it's going to work, but... I'm going to try. Okay, da damn near. It's pretty close. Got rid of quite a few of them. All right. This part I'm not handling very well, but... We have some room for error. We'll be okay. Get rid of this guy. Batman. Oh! You really wanted the smoke, didn't you? Shit. You jerk. Alright. Hell yeah. All the upgrade stones. Give them to me. And we can be sloppy for this part because the boss is actually pretty damn easy if you have strike damage. Okay, we get these. It's like our own personal stone fang tunnel. I love it. See, honestly, we're improving this operation significantly because... We're getting rid of their workers, which means they don't have to spend any money paying for labor costs, and we are getting rid of all the stuff we're excavating it. Although, I suppose that's not really how it works, right? We're probably destroying their operation because they probably love and respect their employees, and the other thing is they need to sell this stuff for a profit. I would imagine is the name of the game for this operation. So, maybe we are just a train wreck. Okay, so Shatter Earth. That's the spell that I was talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still under the weather, if you can't tell. Um, thrust Staff into the ground to emit a shock wave. And he hit us right in the back of the freaking head with it, if you noticed back there. So, it can be quite good. Not really in PvP. I wouldn't try to PvP with that spell. Um, it's good in PvE, though, especially for slower enemies. All right, so let's do our thing. We always jump off to check on the way down, and there's a damn good reason why, because boom, a tier three somber smithing stone. We got another one. And I know just what we're gonna use it on too. Okay, ooh. Bam, another somber smithing stone. This game is dropping them like candy at this point. Okay, so let's do this. Can I summon? Nope, I don't have enough to summon them. Okay, so what I want to do then... Hmm. Can't buff my weapon... Can't really do much of anything. Doesn't matter though. It's you'll you'll see what I mean. It's this is gonna be over very quick. <laughs> so I want to summon these guys specifically for aggro and for nothing else. They're not gonna do a whole lot of damage except for the ones with the clubs. All right. Wow, they are doing surprisingly well. Oh, I missed. Jumping attacks, okay? Jumping attacks and charged R2s. That's the name of the game with this boss. Once we break this boss's posture, it's over. Like that. And you get the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell, Tier 1. So, talk about a brutal end to a fight, right? Like, that boss is not hard at all. And I know for sure that that boss will give some people some issues on their first try. Don't let it, though. It is really as easy as I made it look. Use something with strike damage. That's the important part here that I can't stress enough. I don't care what weapon it is. It could be, you know, a flail. It could be the morning star. It could be the bonk. It could be anything you want. But just make sure you're using something where it says strike damage under the weapon type. And once you do that, a couple jumping attacks, a charged heavy attack, whatever you want to do that causes uh, stance break damage, use that against that boss and you will literally tear it to pieces. And I think that went so well because uh, two or three 
of our little minions of the night have clubs for their weapon, which is strike damage. So that's, I think that's probably why that went so well. So let's do this. Let's look at our little bell bearing that we got. It's very important. Bam. Smithing stone one and two, and then we can buy glintstone scrap as well. That's what it'll do for us. And that's important because from now on, once we give this to the twin maiden, we're going to be able to buy these at the round table. And we're definitely going to want to do that to upgrade weapons accordingly in our playthrough. So, we just cleared this guy. And I think what I want to do now is... Yeah, I think I want to go down and do this doozy right here, which is... It's a bad one. It's a doozy. But let's go do it. Let's teleport to the Bellum Church. And I think I'm up for a challenge. Uh, the the blind girl that wants the Shabriri grapes, or the eyeballs, is going to pop up here where we are at the Bellum Church. Um, she is currently back over this way, near these ruins. So yeah, she's she's right here, Lightseeker Hyatta. And there is a Shabriri grape in this area that we need to go pick up at some point, and we're going to give it to her. And then she will move here to where we are now at this Bellum Church. But we'll worry about that when we get to it. Alright, so... Very pretty shiny lake! And it's got one of those scarabs that's running around like a madman. You can see. If we can cross right here, we may as well go get him. Oh, we cannot. Bummer. That's okay. We'll get there eventually. Alright, and we don't have to worry about these guys. We already beat them before. What we do have to worry about is this knight down here. This cuckoo knight. Wow. I really like the just thousands of different ways that you can get where you need to go in this game. You can drop down using tombstones. Uh... You can do just about anything to get where you're trying to go. It's so freaking cool. These guys have a lot of poise, man. <laughs> but it don't matter. If you're on horseback, they're pretty damn easy. Alright. These big freaking things suck. They shoot poison, and they're... I know that the smaller version of them that we've been seeing in Liurnia is called Land Squirts, but I guess these are just like giant Land Squirts? I guess that might be their name? I know that you can inflict them with poison, which I don't have equipped. I wish I had it because I would show it. Well, I can't pull up my map. We're being attacked. But, uh... You can actually shoot poison at these guys, which seems counterproductive, right? Because they are poisonous, but I'm telling you, it works real good. If you inflict poison directly onto them, like your own poison, it will cause them to pretty much blow up in a sea of poison. Like, they'll get totally out of control. Get our other golden seed. Hell yeah. Sleepy time. Flowers. A must. Oh boy, we are getting into the shit now. Oh man. I didn't think I was going to get here quite this soon into the playthrough, but I'm glad we're here. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> okay. So this place. Oh boy. The Ravine Veiled Village. It's a mouthful, right? So, let me turn this on so I can be a good host. This place, it goes up and up and up. And the problem is, we're going to deal with, uh, goodness, what are they called? Sirens, I guess is what you would call them. Succubi, is that the plural? <laughs> it sounds like a person that... 
but never mind, inappropriate. Um, all right, let's just get started, shall we? So this place, I'm going to do a lot of talking through here that may not necessarily pertain to what's happening on the screen, but uh, this place in particular was very challenging to me on my first character, on my very first playthrough. There are a lot of bats up here. That is going to be basically the only enemy that you fight up here, minus a couple octopus. Up, oh, speak of the octopi. So we're going to find some octopus here, and I don't mean the small fries. I mean, there's going to be a really freaking big one at the end, and we're going to get a really cool curved sword that gives you health back when you kill things with it. And uh, the main enemy up here, though, is going to be the bats. And... Uh, they suck. They're bad. They're very bad. Um, oh boy. We got fire guy over here. So we can hit that guy with some fire. Take him down. So. Oh yes. Another tier 4 stone. We're going to be able to keep upgrading this thing. So. These. Do you see these crystals all over the ground? These like piles of crystal. Well. Not a good example right now. But. We're going to run into things that look like these piles of crystals, and you're not going to, like, care, because they're going to seem unsuspecting, but uh, they will cause poison clouds, and it sucks. So let's get rid of this guy. Smithing Stone 4, hell yeah! Oh man, the challenging part up here is going to be the singing bats, the succubus, which... Or, I guess they're not succubus. I guess they're they're sirens, I think, is what they're technically called in this game. That's like the actual name for them. Dragon's Dogma has both. In this game, it's just the one. Yee. All right. This is where, like, the poison is going to start. Real shitty. Real shitty. I'll point out the poison traps to you. Look at these guys. They're just ready to gank, man. Just look at them. They're just, they're crouched away. They're like, dude, the player character is going to come through that door any minute. And we're going to be ready. No, you ain't. Come over here, bitch. I don't give a shit about your stupid smoke screen. Come here, man. Nah. You're done. And you're next. It looks like we're running low on bolts, but I think we probably have plenty. Oh, come on. <laughs> Get fried. <laughs> The Vulgar Militia Helmet. It's pretty goofy looking. That was a total fluke, by the way. I meant to block, but just happened to have my talisman on because... In uh, classic LP fashion, I keep forgetting that I have a talisman in the next slot. Alright, so these fucking things right here. Let's take a look, shall we? So these little guys, these little spiky things... Uh, looks like the equivalent of stepping on a Lego in your house. Uh, probably hurts pretty bad if you step on that, but they don't cause damage. What they do is they break open and they inflict poison. So, in our situation, we have neutralizing boluses, which will cure the poison, so we're fine. But, you know, always avoid any kind of inconvenience that you can if you can spot it first, right? Just because you might have... The stuff to cure the poison doesn't mean that you should voluntarily walk into the poison. So, I'll show you. Step on them, and that's what happens. But we don't want that to happen. And it sucks. It's a pretty potent cloud. I mean, it will poison the shit out of you immediately. That was just one. I mean, there's like six of them right here. So, fuck that. Fuck that noise completely. Avoid it. Just use your eyeballs, you know? We don't want to skip these tier 4s. So we basically can upgrade our uh, flail again. Like we can get it to plus 10 now. And that's dope. <laughs> that is very much a good thing. Hi. Oh, that's what I get for not locking on. So strike damage is probably not the best for these guys. Uh, slash damage, I would probably recommend against these guys because they have regular clothing on. Looks like there's shinies in the wall, but there's not. Very weird. No items laying around. 
I think we're good to go up. Check for stuff on the sides. I bet there was. Yep. I see it. Now we gotta go back. Damn it, I wish I had caught that before it was too late. Alright. Let's be real smart. Let's be very, very careful about this. Huh! Bingo! A tier 5 stone. <laughs> that was worth going back for. Now the problem is, how the hell do we get down? Uh, right here. What do you know? How convenient. Now be careful. It looks like that part is just a tiny bit uh, lower down and might cause damage when you drop. Great. Not bad. I think we did alright. And we'll check the other side on the way up just to make sure nothing... Nothing... Nothing, nothing. All right, home stretch. Why did I say that? It's not the home stretch at all. We're not even close to getting to the top. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, this is where the shit starts to get a little bit hairy. Um, wow, what a terrible image that must have been for your heads. So backstab this guy, and then we're gonna have. This guy over here with the lamp in his hands. What I ideally would like to do is get this guy to come over here. Oh. Good. That was weird. Oh, fuck. I'm dead. Because I'm an idiot and I can't seem to remember. So... That was weird. It, it made me do a backstab animation, but did not actually give me the, the critical. That was a little strange. Tier 5 golden rune? Hell yeah, I'll take that. I know, man. You're just a union man that's trying to get your 8 hours. I get it, but sorry. I gotta put you down. As soon as I sit down at the grace, you'll come right back. And you'll be in overtime by then. It'll, it'll all be fine. Here we go. So this is the part that I was having like negative flashbacks about. Do you see this guy hiding in this corner here? He is going to give you a hard time. Like the instant that you go in there to try to grab that item. And then boom. Look at that. Another one hiding around the corner again. So let's do this. It's sleepy time, boy. You're done. Oh, we got their armor. Cool. Wakey, wakey. Flail and bakey. Watch out for the poison. Ah! I literally just said it. God. <laughs> hey. All right. <laughs> Watch out for the poison. Crunch. God, that was annoying. Okay. I swear, these last two episodes have been slop fest. Like, I I would totally meant it when I said it before at the beginning of the episode. I'm hoping by this point in the playthrough, you guys are just here because you like spending time with me. Because, God, sometimes the way I play, I cannot imagine somebody wanting to be here for any other reason. Alright. I don't have time for you. Fucking, what? How did he not see me? Wow, that was satisfying. All right. So this part. We're going to sneak up. Do this real sneaky. Do you see that? Over there. Lock on never lies. No. E no smoke. Fuck. Well, I got one arrow on him. That's fine. Oh, God. I forgot the fucking grab attack. Oh, no. Uh. All right. Come over here and fight me where I can freaking annihilate you. Damn, that looked like it hurt. I love it. Okay, let me get these. Sneaky, sneaky. Ooh, there's our tier 4 somber smithing stone. Perfect. Now we can take 
our wonderful scythe to the next level. Get rid of this guy. And I'm telling you, do not make these guys stand up and start fighting you for any reason until you have taken down those two Jagaloons that are hiding. So you got the guy right here that we killed in a horrifically painful manner. It was wonderful. And then you got the guy hiding in the dark corner over there. So like I said before, lock on never lies. Click that analog stick in. And if you feel like there's no more enemies left, don't go on that. Prove it. Confirm that there are no enemies left. And you'll have a much better time. This game loves to use your visibility against you. Ah! Hey, another tier four. <laughs> we can get our crossbow to the next level too, if we so choose. Shoo. All right, here we go. So now we're starting to get into the, uh, I'm not gonna call it the meat and potatoes because those are both delicious and go together wonderfully. This is where we're going to get into the salt and open wounds of this part. The ruin strewn precipice is uh, quite high up. It's very, very much up here. And uh, there's a reason that it is marked on the map by this giant red STD looking spot that just says, ouch. Um, it's because it is. It's, it's pretty bad. This is where we're going to get into the stuff that I was complaining about <laughs> a minute ago. The bats. And uh, yeah. What would my Bloodborne character have said in this part? I know why you don't like to clear the ruin strewn precipice. I know why you choose to have your little uh, <clears throat> group therapy sessions at the round table hold. The bats. Yeah! <sighs> that could have been really bad. <laughs> yeah! Just like the birds in Stormvale. Wait for them to bounce off the shield, and you use the lightning-fast guard counter to make them eat shit. Wow, we're gonna have the entire set by the time this is over. Like, we now have pretty much their entire armor. That's sad. Alright. I don't want to miss anything. I feel like I'm moving pretty quick. So it's like, it's weird. It's like, I have this, uh, kind of like, I don't know, issue with doing this. I don't want to move too fast because then I will miss things, but at the same time I need to keep pace, otherwise it's boring and nobody will want to watch. So we're not going to go down there first. I know what you're thinking, right? Like, ooh, that's I see that first. I should go there first. No. Stop. We're going to go up here first. So this part is so bad. It's awful. So this is going to be one of those moments where I can't reach it enough like it's gonna take every single one of my pots we're going to go like full-blown fire pots all of them this is one of those instances where fire pots are just the best look at that that is exactly what you want you want both of them to die immediately not have any chance of attacking you and we do have this guy up here Eesh. don't do a grab there we go and we do more than enough damage for these guys. Like, they're not ultra dangerous, it's just they have a grab attack, right? And the more they attack you, the more they do, the more damage they do, and then you have bleed and stuff to worry about. So let's grab the rune. And I'm not going to waste my fire pots on this guy. I'm going to want to use regular ammunition for this guy. I'm just going to pull him. Yeah. Oh, what was that? What was that? Jesus. Alright. Yeah, you really gotta keep your eyes open in this area. You gotta watch watch for the bats at all times. So this is where you will want to drop down for that item. Uh, you can take the ladder too, I guess. I mean, you know what? No. We're just gonna drop. Got Mr. Excavator over here. Okay. Oh, sweet! Another Tier 4 Somber Smithing Stone. That's amazing! Sorry, man. I'm not against unions, I swear. I just... 
I'm just trying to get through. All right. Wonderful. So, looks like we have covered our first section of the cliff. And I wish I could say that's a good thing, but it's just not. Oh, don't you dare. Yeah. Hell yeah. We're trying to get our gear upgraded. That's what we're doing. It's the whole reason we're here. It's the whole reason we're here dealing with this bullshit is because we need to get our stuff to the next level. We need more damage. So, all right. What was I saying? I'm going to finish that thought. I wish I could say it's a good thing that we have made it past the first cliff section, but that's not a good thing because all it means is we are now at the second cliff section, which is right here, and this is where we officially have to start dealing with the sirens. You can hear them singing, and uh, one cool thing I want to point out is that the song that the sirens sing, I think I already mentioned this, the song that they sing is on the soundtrack that you get with the special edition for this game. What in the fuck? How the hell did you not die from that? Give me that stone. Alright, so this part needs to be done correctly. Am I in danger? I'm not. I can stand. Okay. Good. Let's make use of our binoculars. So there's your siren. It's singing right now, and we've already dealt with these things once already. However, I've never given them an opportunity to really demonstrate how much of a pain in the ass they can be, and I certainly won't start today. So you're just going to have to watch me deal with them in LP fashion, wipe them off the face of the earth like the scum they are as fast as possible. But it's not that simple. Got bats. Got one, two, three, four... And they're not for show. And they're not just hanging out. <laughs> that was a terrible pun. They are very much watching and waiting for you to make a move on this asshole. And don't do it. Don't fall for it. Do your due diligence. Be a professional Souls player. And we're going to use the RPG tactics that have worked for us for centuries now. Pulling. Yes, yes, yes. One at a time, one at a time. Come on. Oop. Nope. Oh, God, I hate everything. I... I keep forgetting that I'm going to have a talisman in my hand after I switch from the crossbow. I don't think I'm ever going to learn. <laughs> okay. I recommend keeping your health relatively full here because one grab attack from the bats and you're done. It's probably over half your health. So if you go into a fight with bats at half health, expect to die. Can we finish this guy with a bolt? Like, No, of course not. Alright, mind your distance with the bats because they can close distance relatively quick, but as long as you're fast with your hands got good hand-eye coordination, you'll be alright. And unfortunately, we cannot take advantage of that guy's plummet, because then we will aggro the siren, and that's something you don't want to do. The whole point of doing this area, and the fashion that we're doing it, is not to deal with more than one at a time. Come on. Come on, you bastard. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, treat these guys just like the birds in Stormvale. Just guard counter all day, every day. Don't stop. Because you can't stop, you won't stop. Okay, we got more more bats up here. Goodness. That's okay. We will kill them all in time. You're going to be professional bat killers by the end of this episode. And I am your host. Let's kill all the bats HD. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you're gonna send the poison at me, aren't you? That's fine. Eat this. Oh yeah, that felt good. Okay. No. Fuck off. 
Ay, 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 ay. And that, I guess, is the, t the bad version of teabagging, whatever he was doing right there. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. We need more ammunition. Like, really bad. Can I not make bone bolts? I can. I can make... <laughs> I think I have an idea. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Those fucking bats. I see. You know what? Let's arc up. This is like the Elden Ring's version of Morphin Time. You know who wrote the Power Rangers theme song? Here's your here's your funky LP trivia for for today. The person who wrote the Power Rangers theme song is in fact the legendary Bucket Head. Come here, you stupid bat. Come on. Oh, you know it was me. Can't you see me? I'm over here. You know it was me. Yes, yes. All right. So, that right there should have been your warning. Um I got I died to one grab attack from the siren. So, just know that that's what you're up against. They are pretty damn hard. And what I did was incredibly amateur. I never should have ran up to that thing unproned and gave it the opportunity to see me. I should have been much stealthier. Because what I intended to do was throw a sleep pot. I wanted to put that thing down. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, you wouldn't think so, right? Because, I mean, if it's a siren, aren't they, like, mythologically supposed to put you to sleep? Kind of how it works, right? Ooh, that did a lot more damage that time. It's because of our rune effect. All right, you. Come down here. What in the hell? I mean, whatever floats your boat, man. And then we don't need to waste anything on this guy. Well, too late. I was going to waste something just to knock him down but come here easy enough as is so let's just do our due diligence shall we we're not uh we're not too far away from where we were the grace is nearby i was gonna try to get through this place without dying at all though like that so i died probably f i don't know five or six times trying to do this part on my first playthrough, it was not easy. Okay, I want to jump up here, but I want to be sneaky. There we go. I want to get slightly elevated, because I need this firebomb to hit them both. Yes. And then we're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to be professional Souls players. Let us pull them one at a time. It looks like we have enough bolts to do so. Get rid of that guy. Let me get my runes. Hello. Oh no. <laughs> I swear, every time I fuck up and try to use my shield, and it's actually a talisman, or a, I'm sorry, a finger seal in my hand, I end up still getting lucky and winning somehow by hitting them with a lightning bolt. It's crazy. Come here. I'm curious to see if the sleep pots will work on this siren because, as I mentioned before, from a mythological standpoint, the sirens are the ones that put you to sleep, right? So, like, wouldn't they be, wouldn't they be immune? Maybe. I hope not. I hope that's not the case. Can't stress that enough. But got a sleep pot that's gonna be ready for this guy. Come here. I have to get rid of all backup. Oh man, that uppercut just looks painful. Okay. Let's make three. How 
How close can I get? That's the question. I don't want to mess this up again. Shit. Damn it. This is not working at all. I have to try to knock him down. And I think the only way that's going to happen is with... The secret weapon. Alright. Let's get him. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I was trying to get a critical. No. Don't scream. There we go. That'll work. <laughs> Misericord got the job done. Alright. I'm going to keep that thing equipped because it worked. So... Being able to knock those things out of the sky with just one hit is pretty game changer. This thing, by the way, I don't know if you guys have ever wondered what this is, but it is in fact uh, the thing that allows you to summon your spirit ashes. So if you one of these are nearby, that's how you get the little uh, symbol, I think, that allows you to summon these guys. Should be anyway. Which doesn't make sense because we can't summon them right now. Like, that's so weird. Maybe it has to be, like, a certain kind. I don't know. I just know that that's something I found on the wiki while I was checking to see why I couldn't find that freaking merchant in the last episode. And by the way, I'm not going to stop until I get to the boss on, on this episode. So this one could potentially run a little bit over. And if you noticed, there was an item on this pillar while we were going through. So can't forget that. Just be careful when you're jumping to it. There we go. Okay, let's get a running start. Alright. Now, more bats though, so be careful. Oh boy. E. About to do a grab attack. No thank you. Oh yeah, these things are super weak to like slash damage, so just to put things into perspective, we'll do like a small damage experiment real quick. So I'm going to do a running strong attack, which is thrust damage or pierce. 116, okay? Now I'm just going to do a regular no running light attack slash damage. This is 85, like, yeah. That should do a lot more. Or that should do basically double damage, but because they are weaker to slash damage than pierce, it doesn't do exactly what we want it to. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to equip the flail. See if we're too heavy. We're not. Hell yeah. <laughs> so let's do that, shall we? Let's keep, uh, let's keep our secret weapon equipped and our regular weapon that we so love. Wakey, wakey, flail and bakey. I think we may have coined a new term, y'all. Hell yeah, give me that. My goodness. Oh, I'm so happy. Wait, what? Hmm. Well, it's a long way down. You think of what I'm thinking? Aim for the bushes. And no, sorry, you're not you're not going to hear There goes my hero by the Foo Fighters. If you caught that reference. It's a great movie by the way. If you don't know what that reference is, you need to google it. <laughs> it's a super duper funny movie. And I can't play Foo Fighters because for one it's too soon. A member of their band actually died. And uh we're all pretty sad about that. But the other reason is because I monetize my content, so. Can't believe I missed this item. I know somebody... There are a lot of you who are very, very good at these games that watch my videos. Like, so a lot of you who watch these videos are, like, significantly better than me at these games. And you can just find everything. Like, some of y'all straight up impressed me. That was so worth it. Going back for that. Some of y'all straight up impressed me with how much coverage you have of these games and how good you are at finding all the items and uh i know that some of you folks who are just straight up better than me at these games and know more about where the items are were probably yelling at me 
about that item a minute ago. <laughs> I'm glad I noticed it. So now we need to head back up. And I think once we hit the top here, we're just going to clear some more bats. Deal with a couple more of those sirens. And there's going to be two of them at once when we do this this time. And you know what? I got no shame. I will full on fucking admit it. The way I dealt with the two sirens up here that are coming up simultaneously is I used Horfrost Stomp. Like before they nerfed it. Wow, this here. I know, I'm just wasting time at this point, but I gotta point this stuff out. It's very fascinating to me. This entire thing, like the way we've scaled this. So there's the grace. We started there, came out of the mouth of this cave. After being way down here at the base where the lake is, we went, fought our way all the way up to this grace. And now we've been ascending these ladders. And we, um... <laughs> <laughs> He's just going for a slide. Um, fought our way up through here. Missed the item that was right there, but it's all good. Caught it. I caught it. And then we got all the way up to this tier where our first siren was. And now we're all the way up here fighting our way even further up. So very cool level design through here. Uh, especially like how linear the progression is through this part. It's super duper cool. Very satisfying. And... I, uh, I don't know, it really, some of the parts of this game, I've probably mentioned this too many times now, but some parts of this game really, really remind me of Dragon's Dogma, in just the way that you progress when you explore. So, alright, let's go handle this bullshit. We're not going to take any shit from these bats, and these tree sentinel statues right here, that is... The, uh, that's the, the, I think it's called the Bellum Highway, and the Grand Lift Dectus is just beyond there. That's where we stopped in, not this past episode, but the one before. We didn't go any further, and for good reason. Alright, so, let's see, what do we got here? That's where the, the octopus is, and that, that item that the octopus is guarding is, in fact, the sword that I mentioned. It has life steal on it. So, all right, let's take a look. We got Siren One and Siren Two, and these ones are different. They got funky hats on them, and uh, well, not that it matters. They're not special. They still shoot poison clouds at you and whatever, but I don't think they have any like super duper annoying special attacks or anything like that. So the only thing we really need to do, and you kind of don't need to, I guess, is you would want to get rid of the octopus because they're the only enemy here. But I will mention this. You can get up on this ladder and you can snipe them and they won't be able to get to you, which I'll show you what I mean real quick. It's kind of cheesy. It's very cheesy. It's like sharp cheddar, what you can do. From here well no maybe you can't what am I thinking of I swear there was a maybe it's probably over there and I mean trust me you can hit them all the way from over there if you have the hand ballista like it'll do it it's got high range but we are not in a sharp cheddar mood I'm in like more of a I don't know I'm in more of like a Gruyere kind of mood you know maybe like a Parmesan Reggiano and we're going to do this the way we want to. Well, I am locked onto him, so may as well just shoot. So let's do it, and let's hope the other one doesn't aggro. And he didn't. That's wonderful. All right. Come on over. Yes. <laughs> die <laughs> all right so yeah this is uh what we're doing here this cheese is more of like a mild cheddar <laughs> i ain't worried about it okay cool it's a beautiful song it sounds great 
the live version is even better than I thought. All right, a U. Oh yeah. No, oh, you gonna shoot magic at me? Shit, you are. All right. Oh yeah. Mmm. That feels great. I despise you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Roll! Yes. Now you must be finished. Right in the ass cheek. All right. What did you think you were going to do against me? Goodness. All right. That went way better than expected. Those guys gave me... Such a hard time on my other character. They gave me a hard time to the point where I was officially running up to them and going like full-blown 20-year aged port salute. Like the stinkiest, strongest cheese you can think of. I Horfrost stomped them into oblivion. And I don't regret it, because it gave me such a hard time. But that was relatively easy. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why you upgrade the Hand Ballista. Because, I mean, you saw it, need I say anymore? It came in perfect handy. It's perfect for these situations where we need something that hits with the force of, like, I don't know, a shopping cart in the Walmart parking lot during a hurricane. What a strange analogy. Where the fuck is my brain right now? Alright, you. Well, one hit? Alright. I ain't mad. Okay. Oh, we don't have the other one out. Here's what we're gonna do, though. It's a perfect opportunity. Perfect opportunity. Let's make ten of these. And we'll equip them. Oh, he blocked it for him, I guess? Alright, so, I'll use this guy as an example. You can throw these in rapid succession. See? It's pretty damn cool. I like it. I think it's pretty great. And what we're going to do against this guy is... These dudes are pretty weak against fire. So Black Flame ought to do perfectly well against this guy. Let's test the damage. So, okay, that did all right. Lightning did even better though. All right. So now, let's do this. And you can run back here and he can't get you up there, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna let him eat his own tentacle and heal. Shit. Shit. Let me heal a little bit. Damn it. I'm just gonna do what I did before. Jumping heavy attacks. They seem to work really well. I know if you get a charged strong attack on their face, it also does well, but that is the danger zone. <laughs> so. Oh, is he dead? No, he's not. Okay. There we go. Alright. So if you hit him in the face, you do real good damage, but the problem is that's the most dangerous spot. Ooh, another smithing stone tier 3. And there we go. The Serpent God's Curved Sword. So this weapon in particular is a reference to one of the bosses that we're going to fight. So check that out. It is a cobra. Curved sword fashioned in the image of an ancient serpent deity and tool of a forgotten religion practiced at Mount Gelmir, which is where that boss is. Formerly used to offer up sacrifices, this sword restores HP upon slaying enemies. And I'll tell you something really cool about this sword. It doesn't have to be in your in your hand. You don't have to actually kill the enemy with it to get the bonus of the health. If there was an enemy alive in here, I would show you. But I don't think there is. I think we killed everything. Mind your camera when you're running around that corner there to get on this bridge because sometimes the camera will like get caught on the wall and jerk a little bit. And next thing you know it, you are falling down. And if you land down there from that bridge, you will either die or almost die. It's unpleasant either way, so avoid it. 
I wonder if I'll find like a stray octopus alive that we can smash to pieces so I can show off this weapon ability. Okay, Lost Ashes of War. So that is an important item. The Lost Ashes of War is actually going to allow us to duplicate Ashes of War that we like. So if you have an Ash of War that you are particularly fond of and you're having a hard time figuring out what weapon you want to put it on or you're tired of swapping it back and forth between two different weapons duplicate it save yourself the trouble altogether and you can just have it on both weapons all right killer we made it all the way to the top where the boss is okay oh wow we did it <laughs> So we have made it to the ruin strewn precipice overlook and this is an incredible view. We can see the path into the Dectus lift and we can see that it will take us all the way up to this higher tier of cliff which directly above us where the cliffs turn dark and stuff there that is the Altus plateau up there and we can see everything else from here too. Man that's wicked. I fucking love this game. Okay, and then through there is going to be the boss. It's going to be the first magma worm that we face in this playthrough. But uh, talk about a rough place, right? Like It's pretty interesting going through there. It's quite difficult, specifically because of the sirens. They can give you such a hard time. But um, all right, uh, happy Friday to you guys. It is currently Monday. <laughs> like for me, I am playing this on Monday, the 25th right now. But this is going to go up as Friday's episode. So um, future me says happy Friday to you guys. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the end of the playthrough of Elden Ring, even though I am kind of sick and probably sound like shit. Um, I hope you guys are still having fun with me these past two episodes as wacky as they've been. And uh, I will see you guys on the next episode. See you later.